Hello and welcome to the 384th episode of the Unranked Podcast. This is Christian Humes and today with me, of course, I have the one and the only Dan Ween. There's only one of me? As far as I'm aware. All right. Dan, I don't think this world's big enough for two of you. I think it's big enough, but it couldn't handle it. It couldn't. That's true. And uh, someone who we, I think we could get more of. I don't know about that. Actually, I take it back. Tom Caswell. Yeah, I, even I don't want that. Yeah, What's up? yeah. I, I, I regret. <laughs> I regret what I said. I take it back. You know what? Well, regret's a strong word. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't no, think no, you'll no, be like. I don't think you'll be like not sleeping later because you're thinking about saying that. Yeah. But, I don't ever know what I'm going to say. He's start like up at night, like, oh my God, I can't believe I said that. Like, <laughs> I can't believe I said that. He's like, don't need me more. I'm going to swing back at 3 a.m. I'm just going to wake up in a, it won't be a cold sweat. Yeah. Teresa will be like, what's but... wrong? And you're like, I said that it would be great if we had more of Tom. And I regret it so much. Mm. It's like, <laughs> anyway. I, I really hope he doesn't think I was being sincere. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, Tuna is not here this week, but Who? he He's is. Wishing he was. He, I am so excited to hear about. Yeah, complain. We'll be back next, next week. Oh, <laughs> big time! I'm he, very excited to hear that. Uh, you know, let's let's not give too much away, but he's no, no, on no. a vacation that he has already told us that he had no he's control already annoyed. over. <laughs> he's already annoyed about about. Of course, he's annoyed about vacation. Of course, yeah. But he's already mad about like before he even left, he was mad. So it, the I'm the excited. the two the two elements are he was misinformed on what the vacation was like and only learned about what the true nature of it was yeah, like days family before planned it, for it was a fam and yeah. that's the other thing is that it everything has been planned by the family what did and he say so when he was telling us he was like a vacation for who yeah. <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> i so love mad. it oh my god i cannot break. wait i cannot wait it seemed to be having fun on the on the old Instagram, but yeah. well, yeah, I mean, you know, well, that's how that's how it is. He's, yeah, we'll see what uh, beneath the surface he enjoys more than he says. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you know, let's yeah, he'll real. bring the heat though. I'm excited. Uh, speaking of bringing the heat, let's talk about today's Pokemon. It's the 384th episode, which means today's Pokemon is. Is it Rayquaza? Rayquaza? Oh, dude, I can't believe Tuna's not here for this. I know. It's the it's the it's the only one he knew. Yeah, didn't he guess it last week? He did. He thought it was it last week. Yeah. It was the only one that he remembered. <laughs> but then, of course, he's like, "Oh, wait!" For the last two Pokemon, he goes, "Oh, both of these are in Smash. I know who these are." Yeah, <laughs> of course. Uh, uh, is there any denying that this Pokemon is goaded? I mean, first of all, can, can we just can we dial back on on the term goat? <laughs> Just as a society, I knew that's where that was. It's the greatest of all time this week. I just, I just feel like <laughs> once we have to say something is goated, mm. it's like, well, once we're using this in this sort of form that it's like we have several goats, then none of them are the goat. Sure, yeah. It's, it's sort of in the in this in the same way that now in Gen three we're getting so many more like legendary or mythical or like ultra rare Pokemon, and that sort of starts to lose its meaning because now there's basically like a hundred plus pokemon in right, that classification a t- you're right. of sure. like mythical pokemon or legendary pokemon we well at least with like mythical or legendary it could just mean like a they don't exist which is bullshit because they do exist For sure or legendary which is really like people tell legends of them and be like all right yeah. maybe totally totally but it, of course like when it, the game started it was like oh, you oh have, yeah i know you yeah. three birds and you got mewtwo and mew that was it there were five yep that was it. And then and then each game they added more that it was like it was like now we'll do six. Now we'll do eight. Now we'll do it was kind of like but here's a legendary way, normal I, type Pokemon. In a way, it's good though. If like you're battling with friends, which is a thing that like I don't think most people really do, but I know that is a that there is a subset of Pokemon people who are very into like battling with friends. Um, but if you were actually battling with friends, there are at least now enough legendaries that like you could each come with a team of six and no one would have repeats. Whereas, you know, in the first game or two, it's like everyone's got the birds. Everyone's got the mute. Like, it was, you knew what everyone was coming to, you know, coming to town. Mm-hmm. Like. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk about Rayquaza. Thoughts on the design. Let's just let's just jump awesome. right to it. Right. 
but like so fucking cool <laughs> it's unbelievable how Sh- cool it's, this like, it's like is. it's a little bit like shenlong it's a serpentine style dragon yeah it's a dragon that's flying that's what type. I was thinking. and it's mega is oh fantastic. it's mega super fantastic cool. It's mega is what I I think about when I think of the term mega, which is like it, mm-hmm. you know it's like its own power and abilities enhance its like physical body. So it's it, it just looks like it is pure like rage and power emanating mm-hmm. from it. Pretty mm-hmm. cool. Pretty cool. Generous. Yeah, I, this is my this is my first time seeing the mega. I didn't even know it had one. Uh, yeah, very. You see the shiny. The bl- it's black, right? Yes. Yeah, dude. Yeah, maybe one of the best this is shinies why I said in goated. all of Pokemon. Maybe 100%. one of the best shinies in all of Pokemon. One hundred percent. You take this design and you do the. Now we're just gonna do it in black. The the black. This requises, is why I said goaded. This is why I said goaded. It's it's really <laughs> cool. <laughs> it is really really cool. It's it's also like it's it's sort of like a. I mean, depending on how you look at it, right? Because like the pixel games is more like a dark gray. Or like a steelish, right? Color. Yes, but that's changes. just you know. But then the mega has the because it has like the energy tendrils. It's like black and yellow, which is yeah. one of the best color combinations, and it looks great. It's just it's just fan fucking tastic. Yeah, it's a sky high Pokemon. What the hell does it even mean? It's that means it's a in Pokemon the in the movie Sky High. That would be. <laughs> like... <laughs> that would be a hell of a crossover if it showed up at the. I mean, I just it, it's, a, it's a fucking flying <laughs> the sky high. They do flying. this though. It's one of my least favorite things about Pokemon when they're like, we have to have categories, and they come up flying. with the dumbest. Yeah. Some of them are so fucking dumb. Um, I I pre- I ignore them. I pretend that it's not really a thing. I mean, if we want to talk about the thing that is the most outlandish form of Pokemon classification, it's the weights of the Pokemon. There are so many Pokemon that are very small that weigh a fuck ton. And like you watch mm. like the anime and a- Ash is just like one handing these things. Like Ash is basically like a su- <laughs> Ash is like a superhuman, like when yes. he's these Pokemon in the fucking cartoon. It's like, yo, know, that 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 bad boy is like 85 kg and you're just lifting it with one hand. Like it's nothing. Like Ash must have like a six pack. This guy has got to be ripped. Which is again I think it's like a crypt Krypton situation. It, it the Where? people in Pokemon are not humans. They're not Earth humans. Well, no, they but I'm be. saying maybe he's from the future where there was like a red sun and the yellow sun. He has super strength. Unless like it's kind else. of the thing, you know, we talk about in Avatar, like the, the stupidest reason. Stupidest thing that's ever been come up with in comics. <laughs> the uh, Superman sun thing is the well, dumbest it, fucking well, thing. <laughs> the Superman sun thing. Yeah, his power came from the yellow sun of the, the earth. yellow sun as opposed. Oh, to you the red didn't like. Oh, you don't like that. No, it's the dumbest, most outlandishly oh. stupid thing that makes no sense. But like, it's future Earth. <laughs> the radiation <laughs> the is right. Done. Like, it's the radiation yeah, the ra- is right. It's just right. The radiation is just yeah. right. It's no dumber than a lot. Anything of else? <laughs> anything else? But, I don't know. I um, think it's. I think it's up there, Tom. Is but it, it any be... dumber than 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 Bruce Wayne having all of the money to fix all the problems in the city, but instead deciding to be a vigilante? Well, at least there's precedent <laughs> for that, you know. Like it's like, well, of course he would decide. You know, I'm like, well, you I right have, now, like, if, infinity money, if, and I could just make everyone not have well, to because steal. Bruce no, Wayne doesn't want to save people. He wants to hurt people, so yes. he hurts the people that he's legally allowed. Like he's like, that I no want to hurt people hurt. that will celebrate me because he's a billionaire. And all billionaires know how to do is to hurt people, but they yeah, also want to be narcissist. celebrated. So it's it's perfect combination for him. You know, if if Musk or Zuck or any of these motherfuckers could, they would be they would try to be Batman. Well, I mean, have you seen Zuckerberg? You see those photos? Uh, you're shredded, looking yeah. great. Damn. Yeah. I hate if only he it. wasn't thinning. I know. I know. Looking I think good. he's from smoking all those meats. But it could be a thing, smoking Chris. Of... Hold on. Hold on. What? Do you not know that? off topic? Apparently. Okay. What? Do you not know about that though? I've definitely brought it up before. Oh, no. he Zuckerberg loves to barbecue. Yeah, and like he all he this. bought a, a meat smoker at one point, like for his backyard, and posted this fucking weird like YouTube a twenty video minute video about him. Like he was like, "I love smoking meats. I, I come out here and we will smoke the meat for hours." Like I don't know if he knew he was saying it like that, but it it. Would... <laughs> Yeah. Like it, it feels like an AI generated, and he video. kept and he kept being like, "Well, he seems like an yeah. AI generated person." <laughs> yes, he does. Uh, yeah. And he keeps talking about like how Sweet Baby Ray's is like the best barbecue yeah. sauce. <laughs> like, yeah, dude. Um, but 
it could be the thing of the Avatar world, you know, the the reason that they justify, oh, well, the characters can do these amazing jumps, even if they don't have bending and all that, is because the gravity on the planet is sure. so is sure. because it's small. Maybe that's what's going on with the Pokemon world. Is it so much smaller so they can lift up? Yeah, these. Uh, I've just always contended things. that the planet is the planet and the humans are very different because, for instance, Ash is ten years old. It, on a show that took about 25 years. Yeah, but um, he also isn't fully human. He's half human, half Pokemon, because Mr. Mime's his dad. No, no, Mr. Mime is his surrogate <laughs> father. He's not his actual <laughs> father. Canonically, they've mentioned who his actual father is. Just, just because Mr. Mime please <laughs> takes care of his mom doesn't mean it's he's... It's kind Wink. of like in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, where Ash has a father, but Mr. Mime is his daddy. Um, <laughs> but my whole thing, Tom, is like, these guys, look at look at Ash. He's getting zapped every episode. Oh, yeah. Blasted. Yep. He gets crispy, and then he just dusts it off. They're yep. not... Humans and Pokemon are basically the same thing. Humans are just like a powerless Pokemon in that reality. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> the only thing I like that makes that sense. description. Uh, can someone give me the name origin? It's the one thing I, I don't do. That's, that's always up to, you know, the team's got to bring in the name origin here. Yeah, so we got uh, Rayquaza may be derived from Reiku, which means sky rending, a word appearing in various media and merchandise that feature Rayquaza. The latter half may be derived from Za, which means seat. Pizza. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Relating to compounds such as Siza, constellation, and Oza, throne. It may also involve Reikia, Hebrew for permanent, Ray and Quasar. Uh, oh. Rayquaza's Mikado origin refers to Mikado, another name of the emperor for Japan. Uh, in two, what's cool about this in 2020, and again, this is it's one of the, the 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 coolest Pokemon. It was they had a Pokemon of the Year poll in 2020, and it was voted the eighth best Pokemon wow. by fans. You know, it's wow. a fan favorite because it's one of the first Pokemon that actually they like brought into the new game from other games like it's one of the like handful of pokemon they like first updated the game with to access yeah. you know so you can pull a rickways i think i don't know if it's in there yet but uh it's already been data mined i haven't messed with any of the pokemon stuff yet until the dlc comes out but um is was it in ruby and sapphire or did it make its debut with emerald oftentimes I, I would guess that you're making a good guess here that that it's Emerald, but I don't know. Because it, it could have been an event Pokemon that was in Ruby and Sapphire. Right. Which is how right. a lot of those Pokemon back then worked. You know, you had to go to like a Toys R Us or a GameStop or a Pokemon trading card game like convention event. Huh. And they would have, you know, the Wi-Fi transmitters uh, when it, once you got to like the DS. But before that, it was like you'd plug in. Yeah. They'd like the you'd cable. go up to like a kiosk and you'd be able to download or use the infrared and get the pokemon like that's how you got mewtwo back in the day as well yeah i mean he's in ruby and sapphire so yeah. it's probably an event based so pokemon. apparently i'm trying to find out if that's true or not but apparently he's in poke uh pokemon pinball ruby and sapphire and not as an npc <laughs> hell yeah yeah pinball games metroid pinball great pokemon pinball great Sonic Pinball, maybe maybe the most goaded IP mm. pinball game, Tom. Interesting. Uh, cool Pokemon. Yep. Very cool in the movie. Uh, it's 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 great in the movie. Which one? Um, the Wish. It looks like. There we go. Is that a Jirachi? That's got to be a Jirachi. Probably. I'm pretty sure thing. it's in several, if I have to be honest here. Well, yeah, I'm sure it made multiple I think appearances. I, there's, there's a movie with Hoopa. It's one of the last movies they came out with, and I liked it a lot because Hoopa's got, like, uh, interdimensional Is that portals. the genie one? Uh, yes. Yeah, and so it cool. creates these, it's like, cool. transdimensional portals, and um, Ash is, like, flying Latios and Latias, and, like, there's just legendary Pokemon everywhere battling it out in this city, and it's, it's like, very fucking cool. <laughs> oh, this is not the po Pokemon I was thinking of. There we go. Oh, 700. Oh, boy. It'll be a while before we get to that one. Yeah, we're probably never getting to, to Hoopa. Just because, you know, we're we're going to suffer the heat death of the planet. Oh, sure, sure. Um, yes. Come on, we'll be underwater. We're not really necessarily suffering the heat death. Well, we'll, we'll be doing both. It'll, you know be, it'll, be a, it'll be a two for one. 
the thing I'm really like worried about, and I'm not worried about. I won't get one free deal for me, but I know like East Coast, especially like mm. Southern East Coast, like is gonna be like worried about it first. Um, the, have you guys read about wet bulb events? No. Wet bulb events are like one of the scariest things I've read about and heard about. This is this is like a a phenomenon. It's a natural phenomenon, but it deals with when the actual temperature of the air not like the like considered humidity but the dry temperature of the air is at a certain point and the humidity is at a max point to the point where even if you're like sweat like the water cannot cool you right if we have like a wet bulb event just like it's gonna be bad bad and there's bad, like michael like jackson saying it's places, good places there have been like places where this has occurred in the past uh, and I was reading about it, and I was like, ooh, that's some scary shit. Not a thing I'll have to worry about in Southern California. I just got to worry mostly about forest fires and what The earthquake. Happening. Earthquake is not really that big of a deal. No, like, but the one. Yeah, the, yeah, sure. We we might have an earthquake in the next 100,000 years or not. Like, we don't. Well, that's what I'm saying. It might happen. Yeah. yeah it's just something it's, in the back of the old, it's, back it's, of the old noggin. No, you know, but the really forest fires, sure. Sure, yeah. a little bit more. Yeah, only yeah. you can stop forest fires, Chris. That's true. Well. And the, the fucking power plant who's basically responsible for causing a lot of the... Oh, uh, let's just go on and start talking about whatever. Guys, Anyway, ignoring like, all that. <laughs> go Google wet bulb event. You'll keep you up at night. I'm not um, doing it. <laughs> I it, really it am It feels not. like mm. it's been so long since we've done this because we recorded the last one, sure. July 1. There you go. Yep. Almost two weeks ago. Yeah. I was like, oh shit, we haven't it feels like I haven't done the podcast July forever. one. <laughs> yeah, July. it uh it was nice having a little, little week off. I hope people enjoyed the power hour. It was uh it was one of the good ones. Not that we haven't had a bad that not that we have a bad power hour. Although I we we've got to bring that chicken dog power. I'm ready. Let's do it. Um I yeah, that being said, I'm also ready for another like old school original like challenge power hour where we came up with like in the next 60 seconds, you do this where we were like spinning the wheel and shit. Like oh, that. the wheel. The punishment the power wheel. hour is pretty good. Yes, dude. Punishment power wheel. is pretty great. How could you forget the wheel? Yeah. Um, Maybe we can convince Alex to do a second power hour for episode 400. I, I mean, like where your head's at. He handled it pretty well. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's just a matter of him being able to have the extra free day where he doesn't have to he can't be responsible for watching his child obviously yeah, what he's right. gonna do a power hour so it, it's part of you know what made it so difficult to do in the first place <laughs> but maybe we can make that i would love to do the punishment power hours you remember all the stupid shit we were doing we were like writing stuff in our face and taking pulling hot shots people and yeah some texting nasty people. weird stupid shit we were doing. yeah yeah yeah, that's tougher because those definitely hurt the next day. <laughs> oh, Dan, what have you been up to? Uh, let's see. We went to uh, to Tuna's for Fourth of July. Since yes. then, yes. Oh, yeah. Tom over there. Oh, wow. Right. Yep. God, yeah. a lot has happened. Uh, uh, we'll get. I guess. Yeah, we'll get back into that in a second. I guess. Uh, I on Saturday I was. Uh, playing a poker tournament online before I streamed and I won, so that was nice. Made a nice couple months worth of pay. Oh shit! Wow, very nice for Great. me, which is less than it would be for Tom, but that's not the point. <laughs> well, it only there we go. I just don't make that much money, but uh, <laughs> but no, that was nice. And still then a nice uh, chunk of change. Yeah, so still some. Uh, I'm still still trying to acquire the money from the site because it's a whole pain in the ass to catch it, cash it out. So Sounds about I'm right. slowly receiving it. Uh, but yeah, that was uh the big two events. But going back to the tuna tuna BQ, I don't know what to call it. Uh, yeah, we had a bunch of people together. We sat out in the fucking ninety degree heat. Ooh, and we were lucky though because it had been like piss raining down right up until we all got there and it was still muggy and it still was outside and you know we were very close to having what was it a wet bulb event but um but I think it's when uh, you poop or something I don't know. but um it f thankfully didn't like uh 
torrentially downpour um yeah we had a bunch of fun we had uh a lot of food we played a fun card game called mantis have you played this chris are you aware of this one it's a no. like a party game it's basically like you have um you, you d- everyone deals four cards and each one has a shrimp mantis on it and or mantis shrimp and they're all different colors and then there's a pull deck kind of like uno right and mm-hmm. you go around and everyone pulls one and they either pull one for themselves and if they pull for themselves and it matches the co- the color shrimp mantis mantis shrimp that they pull matches one of the ones that they have it goes into their score pile um and if they but they can pull for someone else and if it matches a color of someone else they like kind of bank it into there was like the tank which is where their cards are and then there's the score pile and if you pull for someone else it it, it takes what if if it matches any of the mantis shrimp that they have of a certain color they steal all of those and the thing is is on the back of the card it has like a logo and it has three colors on it and the mantis shrimp will be one of the three colors on the front so you have okay. to look at the cards you have you have to look at the cards other people have and yeah. uh, we had we had a, we had a, a ton of fun playing it's kind of like advanced go fish sure in a way sure go shrimp but uh yeah, we we had fun. Most of us understood the game. Uh, <laughs> there were there were a couple outliers there who were really struggling with the concept. <laughs> uh, outliers who will not be named. Who not only heard me explaining the rules, then proceeded to read the booklet despite <laughs> everyone pretty much being on the same page uh, as to what the rules were, and still, even after reading the rules themselves, str- kind of struggled. With the uh, with the uh, with the old, the old, the old rules. Yeah, you could probably guess who that, that is. Yeah, you could head. probably guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, and uh, yeah, we watched some. We we kind of after that kind of lazily watched some. Uh, oh God, we brought uh, we put on uh, Wipeout, and that was that. That is a show. Well, no, hold and on. Did we old... put on Wipeout? Oh no! A, a, yes, uh, Tuna's daughter uh, stepped <laughs> we were on the watching control. Impractical Jokers, Impractical Jokers yeah, she was on, remote. and she stepped on the controller, changed the channel. Wipeout is one of those shows that, when you put it on, for the twenty minutes you're watching it, mm-hmm. it is the funniest fucking thing that you've ever seen in your fucking life. And then you are like, "I'm good. I don't have to watch Wipeout for the next like until the next barbecue." Until the next July 4th, it when like it accidentally gets put on the TV. What you do when you watch Wipeout. Mm. Uh, what I, I sit down and I go, this is great. I'm going to watch the rest of this. You're going to binge. You're going to binge that. every season of Wipeout. I've seen every season. They haven't made a new one in forever. They, oh, uh, really? Started, I thought yeah, they brought it back. They did. I and then I think someone like died. And then that was it. <laughs> what? Okay. Um, all okay. right. Huh? Yeah. Damn. My, um, my friend, I keep meaning to have her on. She works in uh, Esports League now, but. My, I think it's just not Becky, the one who was a producer on the show with me at two four on Name Your Price. She was actually on Wipeout. She like as a player. contestant. Yeah, she. Fucking, no, she was the slide. She fucking ate it, dude. It, dude, it you see some of great. these. You see some of these hits, and you're like, no way that this person is still. I'm surprised that there haven't been more deaths. I'll just put it that way. I'll just put it. Uh, yeah, I think when yeah. they were bringing it back in 2021, yeah, someone had a heart attack. It's crazy. Uh, oh, it wasn't even like a because br- like I'm looking at people. I'm like, how is your back not just snapping in half now? But you know, they're falling into water from short distances most of the time. Yeah, it was so, it's more like, like when you hit a thing. thing at it's the, the yeah, it's one where they're like sliding and they miss the they miss the platform. Yeah. And they fucking land back first. Like I understand it's padded, but yeah, the momentum, like you know. But uh, anyway, um, yeah. So that was a that was a good time. That was a great time. Good oh, yeah. July 4th. Um, mm-hmm. Nothing else happened. Nothing else has happened. Um, wow. I went to go see... It's a boring week after that. <laughs> it's been pretty by the numbers. I went to go see um, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. Uh, I saw it in 
I saw it in 40X, which initially, which is the one with the seat moving and oh. the yeah. spritz and the, all this. Initially, when they played, they have like a demo play beforehand. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, this is going to be a nightmare. Uh, especially because I had a beer in my hand and it was very much, I was like, this is rocking. Oh, yeah. That is way more honestly, than even I thought. Just it would. having like popcorn. Is yeah. Impossible. It's a yeah. fucking, you're in for a workout just to keep that yeah. upright the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's stabilized. Um, but the thankfully the experience I, I i did feel like i had a lot of fun with it and um i mean the movie's out now so by the time people will yeah. hear this they, they'll probably have seen it but i thoroughly enjoyed it i'm a i'm, I'm a very excited big fan of the series and yeah. but i i think the my favorite up until this one was ghost protocol i just think that it has the my most favorite fun, it, had the, it has the most fun set pieces um red bird he knows what he's doing. Yeah, it's. I think like it really, just like leaned into the fun, and I think that the I love the Christopher McQuarrie ones. I think Rogue Nation and Fallout are fantastic films, but they are well. a little bit more on the dire side. And this yes. one is, this one is also on the dire side. But I, I felt so fucking compelled throughout all of it, and um, I I think the kind of like final set piece of the film might be my favorite of all of them. Um, and we, I'm, I'm champing at the bit to go. See, I have t- Brooke and I have tickets. We're watching. We have Rogue Nation Fallout still left to watch, um, and we have tickets to go see the the new one this weekend. And I'm just like, I, I just I cannot wait to see this film again. And I think it is my my new favorite. Um, yeah, is it the yeah, goat? I very much enjoy it. It is good. Well, you know what? I would say that. <laughs> maybe five of seven of these films are kind of goaded like mission impossible three onwards all of these movies are excellent action films yeah, they're all the greatest five, movie of all time five is good but it did feel a lot more of like uh i don't know it felt like they just tried to do four again but with okay. not as good set pieces um, five is my five is like out of all of the good ones Five is probably my That's, least favorite. Yeah, I think it's it's probably second from the bottom on my like. If I had to order them, having not seen seven, obviously, I would yeah. go four, one. Oh wow, one. Yeah, I mean it's great. I think I it's love. Great. I like one a lot. It's the most like a spy movie, and I kind of like that. Sure. I kind of like the simplicity of it. Yes. Um, and then so I'd probably go four, one, six, three, two, uh, three, five, two is probably what I would do. Yeah, I would I would just probably scooch one above one more. two. I th- I think one is great. I think yeah. two, and it's funny because we watched two, and two it, is it's the only one that still has, like it's still somehow one of the most iconic scenes from everything that's happened. Oh sure, is the laser scene. You know, like yeah. as much as like these other scenes are iconic, these stunts that they do, yeah, they're not getting parodied. Like they're no. not like showing up in other things. Whereas like. Yes, the Mission Impossible laser scene is going to show up in in movies and TV shows for decades. The bit where he's out, dropping, so. yeah. yeah, I I um and and you know it's funny watching they they stop doing it at some point, but everyone after that tries to do like a callback to that. I think yes. I think four is the first the one where they the do best. it. Well, no, the fourth one I think does the best version of that, and it's with the screen in Moscow when they're when they're at the oh dude the screen is, the. Because it's all, you know, it's all about like getting into a thing and like not yeah. being seen, and it's like, oh, and like they have to be careful about that. Like it's very. They just I meant specifically the act of like him oh, doing yeah. the like the the visual because they do it in two and three. They have that kind of visual. Oh well, but Jeremy Renner wears the magnetic suit, and he, I guess, he fans. does. Yes. <laughs> um. Oh, dude, that screen, but the the, the stuff best. in Abu Dhabi. So good. Uh, when he's i've seen ghost protocol is one of those movies that i've seen more times than i can count and we were watching it last night and the and him climbing the side of that building and the glove fails and he drops 10 stories and catches himself i am still i've seen him do this a bunch of times and i am still like oh my god i just can't and then he does the bit where he's like sandwiching himself between like, and he's cutting the with yep. the laser in the. There's also just like so really phenomenal smart 
decisions about like design in that like with the gloves the way that they like set up the lights and the sound so you yes. knew when they were and weren't working so you knew that yes. like it was starting like you knew how this thing worked that doesn't exist within like 30 seconds like you completely understood it so they were able to build like all this drama in a scene where no one's talking you know it was oh, it's it's it. a movie it's what, it's honestly it might be like one of my favorite Odin. movies of all time in terms of just simple enjoyment and watch, yes, I would yeah. totally agree with that. Um, yeah, so very much enjoyed Dead Reckoning. So you're going to see it this weekend. We're going Dan, on Friday. Danny, are you planning to see it? What's your Maybe experience with Mission Impossible? I've seen I, at least the first four. Uh, I'm not sure if I ever saw the fifth one. Uh, the fourth one, I think I saw with Chris and Tuna. Uh, when we came to visit one year, that's we went, entirely think, possible. Uh, the year before we went to E3, or the time before we went to E3, because I remember I got off a plane hammered because I was drinking wine the whole time <laughs> on the way to LA, <laughs> and uh, it was like two in the afternoon or one in the afternoon we got there. Chris wouldn't and, have been uh, in LA and because 2011 was Ghost Protocol. No, I was in LA. Ghost Protocol was in 2014, I think, or. Maybe even 2015. No, that would be Rogue Nation. That would be five. Well, I was in LA. I know that for the for Ghost certain. Protocol. Yeah, 2011. You would yeah because been I met I I met Brad Bird's parents. Oh well, there you go. Or oh, wait, when no, did you move to writer. LA? Was it Michael Arndt who wrote it? Who who wrote it? Uh, Josh Applebaum, Andre okay. Nemec, and I read, Chris from Macquarie. I met Brad Bird's parents. I couldn't remember who it was for a second. You moved to LA in 2011. Yes. Oh, well, there you go. Yes, because this year will be twelve years. In 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 like three weeks, I will have lived here for twelve years. Yeah, at the time when we visited you for that one, you were living, I think, uh, like in uh, was that's it Los when Feliz? I was living in Los Feliz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, but anyway, I was pissed drunk, got off a plane, and someone came with the idea of like, oh, let's go. Like we dropped off our stuff. I was like, oh, let's go see this movie over at the Chinese theater. <laughs> I was like, uh, okay. And I just sobered up the entire movie, so I don't remember much of it. It was a miserable experience. <laughs> That's so fucking funny. I completely I was just that sweating at beads. It was not even that hot. I'm just sweating profusely, just sobering up. That's so funny. I to I had completely forgotten that that happened until you said this now. That's so funny. I think um, it came up with Tuna the other day. That's why I didn't remember it. All right. Well, uh, anything else? Uh, have you, you get up to anything else other than you know winning some money and going to a great party? Doesn't seem like quite enough for a week. Um, okay. I went to work a day. Okay. <laughs> no, I actually had a few days of work, and then uh, I've been watching like uh, the streams of the uh, the World Series of Poker main event on TV for like the last few days now. So All right. it's taking up a lot of my time just laying around playing on my phone as that's on the TV. Fair enough. Are you playing any games? Um, yeah, I played uh on stream last night. I played as Dusk Falls. Okay. Which, uh, yeah, that's mm -hmm. like, like a story like a based game. game it's like a choose your own playing. story type game. Only I, I was able to. This was this from the stream? It was on Game Pass. Oh, cool. And I just kind of went through and I was like, oh, this sounds interesting. And then I wasn't sure about it, but I had turned on um let the Twitch uh chat like vote on decisions and so i had uh I had spiffy in there do sydney was in there and kevin m was in there and everyone was just kind of chilling voting on these things and sometimes it would be like a roulette of like who knows what's gonna happen sure because like everyone chose a different option and just all right and uh at one point in the story pretty early on uh i could have just diffused the situation and i wanted to and it was 100 percent just my choice and I clicked the wrong button. So instead of saying, uh, yes, there's no one here, as a cop was asking, like, there's like a hostage situation going on. The cop's asking, like, is anyone here? Uh, or like, is everything all right here? I'm just like, instead of going, yep, which I tried to hit, mm -hmm. I, I scrolled over the wrong option and I said, help. Oh, and boy. it started to shoot out <laughs> immediately. I was like, oh, God, I did not mean to do this. <laughs> How you think you'll beat this game? Do you know how long it is? Would you I don't think that? it's really a beating it's or short. not beating type oh, game. It? It's uh, it seems like it's well, it relatively game, short, but I'm gonna I'll, I'll play it again next week. Uh, cool. People seem to enjoy it, so 
Sweet. I'll play it again next on Tuesday, uh, Tuesday again, and maybe finish it or maybe not. I don't know how many chapters it is. We got through two. It's it's a cool game because uh, obviously it has the Twitch integration, which is very cool. But you can also play it. Oh, I didn't know um, that was an integration. I thought you just like put a poll thing up. Oh no, no, no it's no, like no. part of the, it's like in the game. Oh, yeah. that's cool. That's super cool. But also the other thing is, is like if you play it with people in the same room as you, you people can connect with that phone. Yeah, and Jack tap Box through options thing, with yeah. the yeah, all, kind of Jackbox awesome. it. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, I think it came out. Yeah, it would have been last year. It was one of the that was one of the big kind yeah, it was of like third party games that Xbox was pushing. Yeah, I remember the name. I don't really recall like the visuals of this though, but you know they they show off. There are a lot of these kind of just story based games now, in a way that like. I mean, I appreciate them. I think they're great. But I, I think I have room for like one a year. Oh, yeah. You know? Well, like yeah, you can't play too My much. ADHD, it's just like, I, I can't, especially if it's the kind of game where like you're just pointing and clicking and like the characters do all the action for you and you're just selecting stuff too. Yeah, they have some like action things you have to be like ready to do in the middle of nothing. Like, you're not ready for it all of a sudden and all of a sudden it's like, oh, quickly do this. And it's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> you're like, I'm not used to having to respond to anything in this game. Yeah. 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 And I, I play, I've been playing um throughout the year. I'd stopped and now I picked it back up again after we had uh, Brendan on because he brought up Case the Golden Idol and that's a point and click game. And now I'm just kind of like, I finished that, and now I think my patience might be shot on doing any more just, like, mostly text-based interaction games, <laughs> because that one also was, like, that's, that was a really hard puzzle game at times, if I gotta be honest with you. It starts out very easy, and then as it went on, so... That's cool though. That's I've never heard of an integration like that in a game. The, cool. the, oh, I've, I've the, seen it a few times. Call to the Lamb had a good integration with uh, Twitch. Yeah, Call to the Lamb had. Where it, like you could have like your Twitch uh, chat go like I want to be one of the people in your cult, and then it would do like a lottery, oh, and if they awesome. win, they get to pick what their character looks like. Yeah, oh, it was cool. So cool. Fun little stuff. Yeah. The the thing I appreciate about uh sorry the thing I appreciate about um as dusk falls is a it is just choice and input selection there is no like all right now walk around the space as the character like a, a telltale game and and pick this up and go over here it is just an interactive story and because of that you know one of the things like with the timing of it like oh shit i'm not ready to pick this thing mm. it isn't that thing where it's like oh an important choice is happening every 10 minutes or whatever they are constantly having you like having to pick oh wow. so you're you're kind of constantly engaged in a way that some of these uh story games that's the thing with like the telltale games like i enjoy them but the the interactive cutscenes are great but when it's like okay now i have to walk around this space and <laughs> yeah i remember just... i remember like a mission in in the first the walking dead one everyone sing his praises i was like i'll check it out you have to like find a radio and then put batteries in the radio and i was like well you guys clearly aren't capable of like game designing this in a way that is fun it's yep. just frustrating and so that's the thing i like about it as dusk falls is it doesn't have any of that it's just about uh choices and stuff it's cool well, the, the, they pass. need to there was a couple of things that were dumb where like oh, i only have sure. i only have one <laughs> choice like it would be like here's a room full of choices and then I'd slowly choose them and then like okay that did nothing uh choose another thing and then it's like there's one choice left and i still have to wait though however many seconds to vote on the one choice and it's like just choose it for me i sure I, it's the only yeah, thing i can do yeah. yeah it's yeah. it definitely the games definitely still has problems. I also think like the story is not great ultimately. Um, well, it, it starts off promising it. and then it kind <laughs> of uh, another thing that I appreciate is it shows um, like after you complete a chapter of it, it shows you like a timeline view of yeah. like, here's the first scene. You made this choice and it branches off this way mm -hmm. and you can go back if you want and like, oh, I, re I regret I just like Chris regretted in the beginning. I regret making this choice. Let me do something else. And it will allow you to kind of skim through the timeline, go to that point and like make a new choice yeah, rather than like, like okay, how many different branches there were that I didn't get. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, it is cool. I, I like shit, shit like that. It's definitely a game. If that if that sounds interesting to you, it's definitely worth checking out. It is not. 
it does cool stuff, but it's still like not a. It's not it the could goat. have been a. It's not the goat. It could have been a goat, but it is not. Anyway, <laughs> no okay. I'm glad you're enjoying it and playing it. That's cool. Have you uh, considered trying uh, Stumble Guys? Dan? No. Just check it out. It's coming to Xbox. I mean, we'll talk about that in news. But uh, I played a couple of games. ID at Xbox had a thing uh, yesterday. Um, and then there was another game showcase today. That was, But it was all like limited run games. Um, but the ID at Xbox, they have right now, I think, maybe about 20 games out on demo. Yeah. Which it's basically like, you know, they're treating it almost like a, like a virtual E3 kind of thing for indie games. So all of the games they showed off, there are a bunch of demos you could just download and play for free. So I downloaded a few of them. Um, I only got to play, I was like, oh, let me try and play a few of these before the episode today. But I, I only ended up playing two because the third one didn't work. Uh, I tried to play Made a Ball, which is like some kind of, you know, sci-fi sports game but um it was like you launched it and you get to the splash screen and it's like this game requires an update to run on xbox and then i quit it and then it, i updated it and then it still said that and then i reset my console and quit it and then I, so that one just didn't work but i did play these other games that i saw people being like oh these are great and i was like okay let me see what this is i played a game called um exhausted man mm-hmm which I think is funny because you I think Tuna's tell... playing that game every day right now on vacation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, the the humans are kind of laying down like worms in this game, and like you set a scene, and like the the conceit is like people are too tired to do anything because they have to work all the day, all like all time. All so the game itself is meant to also be for people that are just exhausted and still want to play games. So it's like very low interaction it was like they gave me a small square room and i had to put a bunch of little set pieces down so i put down like whatever i want i could choose from different things so but like a yoga ball a yoga mat like a desk a plant put a picture up on the wall and then it was like perform this task with the person and it was just like really weird where i'm just like slithering this human around the room and using this camera like to perform a task like and just check boxes and I'm not sure who it's for because in a weird way, the commentary that is this game is like, oh, people are like so exhausted and miserable all the time. They don't have enough energy to play games. But then the game you're making me play also feels like busy work that made me kind of feel like exhausted and like I had no energy. Um, and it feels like a game that is made for someone that's exhausted and can't do anything <laughs> at the same time. And I'm just like, I don't know if this is the greatest sales pitch, to be honest. But I did try it. I played through the whole first level. I'll be honest. I don't think I'm going to play it again. But I'm sure there are people that will like this. I think there are people that want games that are just like, you know, check off these five boxes, like do these things that to me I found very just non-rewarding because I didn't enjoy while I was doing them and I got no gratification from getting the boxes checked off. But there's definitely people that are like, oh, yeah, no, check the boxes. Give me the boxes, check love the boxes, them. move the thing. You know, like it's say, like I don't like clickers, right? But there are people that love clicker games where you're just fucking clicking on shit all the time. You know, you're just like, like Diner Dash and stuff like it's for a particular person. So that one wasn't great um, for me. And then I also tried for me <laughs> for me. I tried to marble it up. Oh, I'm curious. Because I downloaded it. I'm going to give it a second shot. Okay. But I think my expectations were higher. It's from the Marble Blast people. It's from the Marble Blasters. Now, I grew up playing Marble Madness on the NES. Is that not the same? Oh, okay. Yes, Marble yes. Madness was made by Mark Cerny. Uh, yes, it was. <laughs> it was also one of my favorite games to play on the NES as a kid. I loved the, the, Marble Madness is the one, the arcade machine with the ball, right? Oh, I never played the arcade version, but probably it probably did use one of the like magic. I think I know you're so just, much, yeah. so much fucking fun. Uh, which we had a Mac with like a trackball. The trackball was like, by the, it was like a translucent blue like plastic ball. Like it was so fucking stupid looking. It was one yes, of those, this is um, it. I love it. I love this fucking game. It was one of those clone Macs that was made by Motorola. 
Mm. But before before Apple was like, all right, we're shutting this shit down. <laughs> yes. Yes. It was a brief period of time where they allowed other companies to use their software. Um, it plays kind of kind of like a Sonic 3D title, but like the well, early you're saying Sonic a bunch of words titles. that I've oh no. wait, so is it a blast? You're a marble and you're a 3D, it's a 3D platformer. And I thought at first, oh, okay, this is this is cool. I could see how like you know the physics of the marble and the rolling, like if we do half pipes and stuff, there can be like cool stuff here. But there was a lot of like very precise things that when you start dealing with like the momentum of the marble and it's mm. like, oh, I hit this stupid tiny little like elevation in the floor that I had to hit jump for. Or, oh no, I needed the super jump for this higher wall. And if you're off by like a tiny bit and you miss it, like you're not going to make that jump and then you have to stop and go back. And it's the, it's the same problem I have with the Sonic 3D games where like, the second you fuck up and you're not moving fast with Sonic, it doesn't feel fun and it feels stupid, right? Like, it, yeah. it's not like the second Sonic has to just stop moving and you're just like, all right, hold on, let me reposition myself when I come back. Oh, no, no, I didn't get enough speed. Let me try one more time. Like, not great. I okay. do see why people could like this, though. I'm sure people like the challenge. Um that I'm pro I'm assuming comes later or when you're competing against people and playing against one another in like the precision of it. And I'm also sure there's a lot of people that just don't care about being good. So if everyone's kind of like fine at it, then it's fun. But as a solo game, like playing it on my own, not for me. So, so far Xbox demos, no thanks. Oh, okay. That's there, was one, there was one that I downloaded and wanted to check out because someone posted the description of it in our slack and it was like it's called the wandering yes um, i downloaded that one that looks dope and they describe it they're like it's nausicaa it's i mean it's not like an action game it's it's like a sim game yeah, it's but like a sim city wandering giant or something you're you're cultivating like a town or like a city that is on top of a a kaiju like you're on top of a giant wandering village like, yeah That's you're on top of called. this giant monster you know, it's kind of like those pictures, like, you know, where they'd have things. It's like, oh, there's a giant turtle with the whole world on its back, you know, like that kind of thing. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. uh, and they're, they're like the there's they're basically on the back of this giant because the world is toxic. There are these plants that are producing this toxin. It's it's like a Sim City kind of game. Yeah, it's kind of like I... Avatar. All the humans oh, with the, the, yeah. turtles, the lion yes, turtles. Yes, they did. The, the world was filled with the spirits that would kill the humans. Yeah, it's cool, and I love the art style. It is also like very Norse. The design of the the, the characters and the the world that they inhabit is very uh, Ghibli and Norseka. So this is one that I yeah. am excited to check out. Yeah, I, I downloaded that. I downloaded Marble It Up. I just didn't get around to actually playing any of them. I downloaded a few more. I'm gonna try them all, but so far I was kind of. The, usually the indies are like the most exciting thing for me to say, like because you get so many of them that there's always like a couple of just like oh this is a great thing i've never seen before sure. but um i don't know I, I haven't seen yet the indie this year that is gonna like that i'm like really pumped uh, unless uh it's like, cocoons coming out supposedly i mean the, the, sea of the, based on the movie sea, sea of, of stars. stars did you play it because the demo there's an xbox demo i'm gonna look at it i'm not gonna play it because i don't want to start I, I haven't sure you know actually wait if the game transfers my game save over, well, then I sure. will start it. If it doesn't, I'm not starting a turn-based RPG <laughs> and then, like, picking it up and doing it over. Like, the worst part of a turn-based RPG is the first hour or two. I'm not doing that twice. I gotcha. You know? But yep. there, there is one indie this year that I'm unbelievably excited about, but we haven't seen anything from it, any of these shows, so now I'm thinking it's not coming this year, and that's the Plucky Squire. No, we have. It was uh, at the PlayStation Showcase. It was. Yeah. Was it just the same trailer though, because I didn't no, see it was a new... new. It was a new trailer. Oh, it was okay. a new I trailer. That, yeah. It, what, was I it think like it got a release short? date too. No. I think it got a release date. Oh no, it just says twenty twenty three. Yeah, Plucky Squire looks fantastic. Uh. Maybe it was at the Xbox Showcase. It was at one of the summer showcases. 
Maybe it was PlayStation. Maybe it was at Summer Games Fest. Yeah, PlayStation Showcase 2023. Oh, okay. I think yep. it was like it, at most maybe a marginally different trailer then. And not I mean it was very similar because it was the same Oh, that's it, right. They showed off other characters. That's right, because there were, we had only seen that there was one character, and they showed off that there are other characters in the game. Now I'm seeing it. Okay, cool. So I'm glad. Then we should hopefully still be getting it this year. There's always a couple indies every year that are amazing, mm-hmm. or at least one. And so far, I haven't played a ton. I agree. You know. Yeah. Um. So last weekend, I went to the zoo, and then I went to see John Williams. He does a yes. uh, concert every summer. It's like three nights. It's a three night event. Um, the like show bell will be different each night. Like the the, the sets that they're going to do, so you don't always hear, you know, the song you're expecting. I do think certain songs will always show up. Like I doubt they never play. Like they they probably always play the Jurassic Park theme, but you're not always getting like this time we had like the song from Schindler's List. Um, oh interesting <laughs> uh, i forget that he did that <laughs> and then but we didn't get home alone like there's no harry potter there was no uh jaws but we you know we got a lot of star wars we got trust park we got a bunch of indiana jones which was cool because we saw indiana jones the night before so mm. that was awesome to go see indiana jones and just follow it up with that have you seen that dial of destiny yeah yeah i enjoyed it yeah, I liked it too. Yeah, I don't know what people don't like about it. It honestly, the only thing I didn't, I I didn't particularly enjoy is I thought um, I thought the what was her name, Helena. Uh, yes, Wombat. The yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought she was like maybe a little villainous when she's supposed to be. <laughs> oh, I liked that about her that well... she was kind of pissed off at him and like into it for herself, and then well. well... Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh-huh. I don't want to spoil anything, but she's yes, like straight hard, up like a bad guy about. at times, <laughs> causing like the deaths of people and not giving a shit and laughing about. Oh, it. something sure, that even Indiana yes. Jones doesn't do. Like I saw some but people be they like, "Oh, she's like that. a young Indian." I'm like, no, no, she's, she's not. not a young Indian. No, 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 no. She's not a young Indian. Um, it's way but... better than Crystal Skull. I think this goes right in the middle. I think this is the third best Indiana Jones. So Crystal Skull is the second best? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, I have a correction from earlier. It was Rogue Nation we saw. It was oh, 2015. Okay. I finally found the photo that I was thinking of that we took uh, near the observatory. So Okay, so that's when it was. I thought it was that trip, too. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. I was starting to think that I knew I didn't it was going to be Ghost Protocol that. because it was yeah. 2011, uh, even though I was here for that. But... um. I was thinking maybe it was a James Bond movie too. It's the the alternative. I knew it was it was a Mission Impossible. I just had to look up and see when the picture. Yeah, it's twenty fifteen. Yeah, that so makes sense. It was Rogue Nation. Um. So yeah, that was great. Uh, you know, everybody's got their lightsabers out. He did like a duel on stage. He did like three different like fake outs, like like it was over, and then he did an encore song, and then another encore song, and another. It was really funny. He he also stopped like in between things and would like talk a little bit. So he was like, oh, so like you know, they came to me and they said we're doing the fifth Indiana Jones movie and we need this song for the new character, and he described the character and like why he wrote it. To sound like that. It was it was amazing. That's it's awesome. incredible. Yeah. Um, if you the live goat. in Southern California, you got to go to this because they do it. They do it every summer and. You know, he's 91. So, I, of course, like he's 91, 91, which is why, like, which is why he's retired multiple times. Like, oh, I've done my last Star Wars. He comes back and does. Another I mean, Star Wars. I've yeah, done think, Jones. I'm doing another. Indiana think Jones. about when like Star Wars came out. What year? I, <laughs> I mean, I know, but like George Lucas is not 91. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, but Harrison yeah, but he also wasn't as accomplished back then. But 91 <laughs> is he, but that's the thing is he did dial of the, he did the score for dial of death. Yeah. Like he is not Which, retired. He starts talking about Harrison Ford. He goes, you know, and Harrison Ford's 80 years old. And I was so proud of him seeing him do all this stuff. And he goes, you know, and I understand 80 years old might be old, but he's still just like a kid to me. Yeah. <laughs> so, so John Williams was born three years after the uh, stock market crash in 1929. Jesus. He was born in 1932. <laughs> he was <laughs> born. <laughs> while indiana jones was doing shit in yeah. <laughs> like yeah. those movies yeah. <laughs> so, that's crazy i did not i knew he was old 
but I didn't know he was. He's won 25 Grammys, five Oscars, seven British Academy Film Awards, four Golden Globes, and he has 53 Oscar nominations. His thing. His thing. I know I'm on board with you, Chris. We retire the goat, right? We retire goaded. Oh, he stuff. can do whatever but he, he wants. He is the goat. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I think it's undisputed. But we're not saying everything's going to the poker world, so we're fine. <laughs> yeah. And but there's some fucking great composers out there. They're not there goats. Like... That's, that's how it works. There are. They're they're amazing composers. But as far as being like a film composer, he's the best. He's the yep. guy. He's he's the best. He's amazing. Um, so yeah, so I love that, 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 uh, had a pool day. We also did a pool day with John, John Murphy, uh, oh, not Williams for 4th of July. No, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, are you kidding me? I would, the, the wrinkly uh, sack listen, that, that would be, be if I amazing. had a pool day with John Williams, you would have heard about it before today. Sure. Everyone Man would. Seen it on the pool. Instagram story. <laughs> yeah. Like he I, did the Fablemans too. Like he is working. Yeah. <laughs> He probably didn't have to try that hard for the film. <laughs> but still, he's... And that is the thing about... You know what's funny about Dial of Destiny? Is I'm listening to it. And obviously, there is thematic um, similarities between his scores. Because it's his work, right? But there's stuff in the original Indiana Jones trilogy that sounds very much like Star Wars. The original Star Wars trilogy. Oh, and there was every stuff... time a new franchise comes out, he starts adding like new ideas, and then he goes to an old franchise. He'll like do a new movie in an old franchise, and yeah. those new ideas end up in the new thing. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, that's the, the thing time. is, I was yeah. listening to Dial of Destiny, and I was like, this sounds like Star Wars, specifically sequels, like all yes. the new Star yes. Wars stuff, yes. like all of the Kylo Ren, like all the Nazi music sounded Part a of lot it is like he's the, introducing new the instruments. First Order. Sure. That's that's also a big part of it. He starts, he'll be like, oh, we're going to bring a new thing in for this new character, this new element. And then he's like, oh, I got some more ideas with that. I'm going to keep using that the next time we can do this kind of a thing. Yeah. You know, um, it's great, man. It's so good. Like, I, I, it's it's really hard to explain, but it's uh, it's like the I've been to a bunch of concerts. It's the best concert I'll ever go to is seeing this. It's the third time I've done it. I'm hoping I get to go more. But uh, yeah, unlike cool. yeah, I I have to. I, here's well, they the thing. do it you every said, year. So you <laughs> said you said oh he's you he only go has see this. Left. I know that's the thing. It's yeah. like I have to go see this. Yeah. There we I go. I mean, he so like the it's the L.A. Philharmonic. So the co- the conductor of that did like the first half of it, and then John Williams came out and like did the second half because obviously doing that for multiple hours three nights in a row is gonna be pretty tough. So that's part of <laughs> one of the things they do. It's you know, he's going to come out and do half the show and the other guy's going to come do it. It was great. It was very cool. Um, I always feel like conductor so, is a bad word for either one of two things. It either shouldn't be the person who's like organizing an orchestra or it shouldn't be the person who's in charge of making the train go. One of those two, there's nothing to do with each other. One of those words should be different. I'm not sure which one it is. Probably the train one. That makes little sense to me. What are you conducting on a train? The operation of the vehicle. Okay, are you are you conducting your car when you drive it? No, you're driving it. Just well, say you're, you're driving not, the train. But the train's on a track, so you don't have to steer the train. You you don't it's... steer a car, a train like you do a car. But you're you're flying a plane, like but you have it mostly on autopilot, like. Well, yeah, but that's the same thing. You in both of them, you can. We wouldn't like, say you're conducting a plane. Well, no, but the plane's not like the train because you do have to actually still physically steer. Just because know. there's autopilot for parts of I think it now doesn't mean that the plane's this. not steerable. <laughs> I think we knew you, we're... You, need to, you need to find an example that matches the fact that the train can't ha- be, uh, you know, you can't steer it. Find something you can't steer. Now, now, how about this? The person who operates a gondola, are they a conductor? I'll probably say no. So maybe I mean, there should be a train a operator. Word we can use. Operator, I'm fine with. Operator makes sense. You're operating him. That's fine. I don't know if but you're there's conducting. There's no opera. Well, that's not necessarily. Oh, every time that word comes into play, it doesn't have to do with an opera. <laughs> <laughs> if you <laughs> if you call the operator to like, uh, but you used to be able to do that. I don't know if you still can even call an operator <laughs> on the All phone. Right. Well, how about this? Write in if you have a better name for either the train conductor or the conductor of a symphony slash orchestra. Let us know. Write in. 
call in 805-738-8692. Email it on our podcast.com or go to our Discord channel. Questions, comments, pod. Um, we can do it together. Absolutely. Only we can stop forest fires. So Tom and I have been playing a game called Final Fantasy 16. And we I have. told Tom that – so I got, up, uh, I got past – they're there would you would you call the mother crystals like the big markers in the game yeah okay so yeah. i i'm what i'm assuming is like the half white point of the game is where i currently am and i told tom i was going to play a lot this week and i lied and i played a lot <laughs> of vr instead which i've been like streaming because i just i set it up to do that um so tom i haven't played more mm. than where i was on friday sure. when we talked about it because i ended up going out all weekend and then yeah, yeah, yeah playing vr all week but uh what would you without doing any story spoilers from where you are sure. what would you like to to say about this game i you know it's really funny like uh before this before reviews even dropped i was talking to G- giovanni um about it because he'd been playing it for review and he was he he gave them the game a six out of ten, and I, I think the Whoa. game, has, yeah, he, the game has received. I mean, the game has received a lot of positive criticism. What is the average review on this? What is like the open? eighty? Okay, I think eighty four. Feels like it's an eighties to me. Yeah, that's what I would and say. I, you know, when he, I think there's two things that really work for me in this game. I think that um, a lot of the stuff he had problems with with the story speaks to things that I like personally. So like, I am very, I totally understand his qualms and other people's qualms with where the story goes and what happens in it. I totally dig it. And then the other thing is, is as I mentioned before, uh, very briefly when we did the power hour is it is kind of refreshing to play a game that feels incredibly big in scope, but doesn't, isn't a bloated it is an open world. There's a million things you do. This game has side quests, but I just have ignored them because I'm enticed by the story and I'm just playing it that way. And the the depth comes from like the combat and mix and matching these moves. So I am thoroughly enjoying my time with this game. And I even, yeah, I texted you and I was like, have you played more? Because when we had left off, we were in kind of like a similar space and we were both like the shit that just happened was nuts. And the shit that happens like directly after that that you've kind of got coming up is like, I, I sent you a picture of my I face. Mean, and I was like, my I'm face feels has massive, been... Tom. Like everything about this feels like I'm in a, which is why I'm like I'm at the halfway point, right? Because it feels sure. like I'm at like a, like a pivotal turning point in the game. There's definitely, uh, yes, I will say that there's a, a okay. very big, but the game is littered. I feel with like kind of big these big moments that well I, yeah because they're doing like a game of thrones story yeah and like in yeah. a single game right so yeah. they're doing like a huge story. every so season like, of game of thrones yeah, in, in one like game yeah every section is like oh like your people are going to be dying like allegiances are going to change like yeah. powers are going to be unveiled like shit's popping off all the and time I and it's just so funny to me because such, such a big problem I've had with Final Fantasy games in the past trying to get into them is like the pacing is so laborious and I think this game is like masterfully paced I I understand like a lot of the side quests are kind of fetch questy this is the team that makes the MMO so they're kind of building it a lot of that stuff in that vein I and like I said I've just completely ignored that and I'm having yeah, a lot I of fun moving through the story. Like uh, yeah, <laughs> that crap is it. And like, you know, a lot of people, some of the complaints people have is like past Final Fantasy games have very deep RPG systems. And this game just doesn't. It, it, it's, no, it's, it's crafting. Like yeah, it's crafting. <laughs> like someone, I think Kotaku put an article that's like, I, mean, I God think of Alex War- would love this game. I, I completely agree. And I was going to, I was going to tell him this. You know, one of the things that I've hopped on about with him is, you know, he anytime he asks for a game recommendation, I'm like, you need to play Ghost of Tsushima. Like, that's my game. And I'm like, I you know would he, love this. But here's he, the thing. Yeah. I'm switching it. This you is the game. This, I'm, I, this yeah. would be the game that if he's like, what should I play now? Because it is big, but it's manageable. It feels like you're moving toward an ending. It feels like you're moving through a story. And... um. Yeah, so I'm really enjoying it. And the combat, like, it, it's initially at first, like, when I f- first played the game, I was like, this isn't as good as... I, 
I know they were trying to emulate God of War. I was like, God of War feels better. And I do think ultimately God of War still offers um, a, a better, a tighter feeling combat system. Oh, but the, the story's s- better too. And the story's better. But the it's having just more fun, I think, with it. Yeah. And like the mixing and matching of moves and the more moves that you gain and the way that they intersect and all that. Uh, I, I, I'm i thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying it. And I haven't been it because I've been spending a lot of time playing Diablo with Brooke because she is loving that. And so when we when it comes to the end of the day, Diablo is kind of the thing that comes up. But yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Really enjoying it. You know, I'm definitely going to end up getting Diablo once it's on Game Pass is what I've decided. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> which which is what, Tom, I'm sounds like so it's going to be. I, did, I, I had the strongest feeling. I'm like, this thing's going to happen, and I'm just going to get it on Game Pass. I'm not going to buy this fucking game. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. it's, I, I really like Final Fantasy 16. It's the first. I've played two Final Fantasy games. I played the original, which I don't think I, I ever. Yeah. I grew up on a, with an NES. So. Sure. So I played the now. It isn't is it American one? Because I think American one is like four. <laughs> no, because it, it was just called Final Fantasy. I uh, right, but the but... American the American one is like a, they didn't release the original. Like Final Fantasy one never came out in America. Um, it I gotta is. I gotta fi- I gotta figure it out. But continue. I'll I'll find this out while uh while you explain. Yeah, I don't know because it says that, that they were also packaged with versions of with Final Fantasy two as well at times, which would be weird if they did four as one and then I don't know you 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 might need to look that up. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna look into um, it. So I, I I played it because you kept bringing up Final Fantasy. I know we have listeners that love Final Fantasy, and when I saw it wasn't a turn based game, I was like, yeah, fuck it, I'll I'll try it. Sounds like Game of Thrones. People like it says it's like 25 hours i'll do it um i think it's great and the only other one i played was seven but i only played half of seven because the person that i borrowed the disc from like had to move away so i couldn't you ever i never had the second disc and that was it <laughs> so i didn't know there you go so final fantasy 4 is in japan is final fantasy 2 here right uh, I think the ones might actually line up, and there were a couple sequels that just never came out. Yeah, in the US. I think I think that's yeah. what happened. Is Which is makes Final sense Fantasy because yeah. whenever I see pictures of Final Fantasy, like yeah, you know, here we especially go. the wizard and stuff, it's like it's the same game I played. <laughs> to avoid confusion, Final Fantasy was released both in Japan and America on the Famicom slash NES. Mm-hmm. Final Fantasy two released only in Japan. Final Fantasy three released only in Japan. Final Fantasy 4 is where it starts getting weird because it's Final Fantasy 2 here and 4 there. And then 5 is only in Japan uh, on the Super Famicom. And 6 was Which released is both Final Fantasy in 3 Japan. in America. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and 6 is 3 here. <laughs> and then 7 is when they were like, fuck it, we're keeping it universal. Yeah, let's just start Got lining it. these up. This is getting yeah. annoying and confusing. Got yeah. it. Okay. Well, awesome. So you that did play the I original I, Final Fantasy. That means I missed less Final Fantasies than I thought. <laughs> yeah, you only well, you could play them. You just you can play. Them. You can get them now. Like yeah, two, three, and all but... that are available now. But you don't want to. I'm sure that game was really hard as like a child. Sure, that was a really hard video game to play as a child. <laughs> Final Fantasy. I I remember like for years just trying to play the game and not really knowing what the fuck I was doing. And then eventually I was able to start playing the game. And then eventually I was able to like actually play the game and beat the game. But it took, you know, when I was like probably like six trying to play Final Fantasy, nothing was happening there. Oh, totally. like, what's all this text? I don't know what this is. I'm not doing this. Text, Put man. Duck Hunt text, back on. The text. Put Duck Hunt back on. I want to play Duck, Duck Hunt. Duck, Duck Hunt. Duck Hunt. Um... I do want to quickly talk about two VR games I played. I played Synapse, and I beat Synapse yesterday oh. on stream. Um, I got a green screen. I put it on my wall on the garage door. I just got like a couple metal. Uh, I got a couple magnetic clips, so I can just clip it up really quick and throw up green screen. Boom. Uh, and I have the PlayStation camera, so it's just so it's does very, it very does it do. green does it take mm-hmm. the background out? Oh, out. that's yeah. cool. That's yeah, dope. Great. I didn't know it did that. Cool. So the only dumb thing is like I can't see the chat. So when people talk to me, I'm always like, "Who's there? Like, yeah. who, who is this? Who's talking to me?" Yeah. Um, because 
it just reads the text to me that they type in the chat um, and not their name but but synapse <laughs> is cool because you get force powers it's it's a run-based game where you get force powers first person shooter uh they're telekinetic powers they suck at first you can do very little with them but then you start to upgrade and unlock stuff and now i they're amazing and uh like not only can i like pick up and throw enemies or throw their grenades back at them but um i can like fling myself and like fly around the map and i can like crush people i can also like grab enemies and then uh it'll like mind wipe them and turn them to be on my side so then they'll go mm. and attack the other enemies it's very fun very fun game um and it's like once you get far, i think the game's fun at first but it's a lot more fun after you've done a few runs and you unlock higher tier weapons and telekinetic abilities and the first like handful of runs i did though i was very like just getting my ass handed to me oh yeah i and- I, I i picked it up and st- I'm in the first like couple of levels and I was like, yeah, I got to do more. Do the glitch. (laughs) So there's a glitch. There's an amazing glitch and it needs, it needs to be an ability. Dan, you would love this glitch because I like glitches. It's Tom. It's like ultra hand in Zelda because it lets me play this. Like I'm playing Zelda, like tears of the kingdom where I'm like, I'm going to attack this from a fucking brave vantage point for me. That feels cheap. Right. This lets you do that because in the game you can move boxes, right? Your telekinesis. But and you can like climb and grab onto lots of shit, but you can't move a box if you're holding onto it, unless mm. you switch your primary hand of your gun from your right to your left and your telekinesis hand from your left to your right, because they probably did not QA it because there's probably not someone there who is left handed. And if you switch them in the controls, you can hold on to the box and move the box so you can just fly wherever the fuck you want on the map. And it is. I feel like a superhero, like I, I'm lifting the box up and then I will just like push forward and just ram into enemies and they will just get crushed oh, and eliminated. So I'm like flying right, around cool. and then I'm just like going up like on top of buildings where they can't the reach game. me. And I'm just like <laughs> ripping the guys and throwing them off the stage from up top and shit. Dude, it's it's so if I know anything stupid. about games, they're going to put a patch out and get rid of this. <laughs> I, you know, because it's a VR game, everyone's like, they're probably never going to fix this. <laughs> <laughs> you know especially because there's no multiplayer you know it's not like it's, yeah, like it's not really like an advantage over anyone else yeah exactly so I, I hope they don't and if they do they need to add like an unlock after you beat the game or just add it to a skill tree that lets you do this as a feature because it's it's so stupid and so fun um and what was great about it was once i did that i was able to get really far and get a ton of unlocks and now my character is mm. so strong that i'm like oh i don't even need to use this thing anymore because oh, now now i'm like a badass i'm just like people are running at me and i'm just fucking throwing them away and just crushing people it's great very fun um and then the other thing was i played walkabout i did random like quick matches with people oh, turns okay. out even if you don't own a dlc as long as someone else owns dlc you can play it. So I bought all the DLC, which means Tom. Now, when we play together, we can it. play any map. Which I think that should be in fucking everything. I agree. One person owns the DLC, and they're in your party. They can play the game. Like they shouldn't need to also buy it. Yep. That, but that you're is... losing out on money that you could charge people. Isn't That's that the true. point of gaming? That is true. Yeah. But with VR, you know, there, there's the issue of like not everyone not has exactly. one of these, so right, he needs like yeah. So, right. But and then it's like, oh well, hey, we're more likely going to get people to buy this if they know that as long as they buy it, their friends can play it too. Yep. You know, so it's um that was that was awesome. But the thing that was so cool about the map that I played is it's called Upside Downtown, and it it's this it's a style of mini golf map that so far we haven't played. Because right now, all the maps we're typically playing are very, like, straight-laced, small, like, mini golf courses. They don't have too many, like, strange obstacles or any kind of weird physics going on. And this one has, like, gravity changers. So, like, the green is partially Mm. on the floor, and then it stops, and then it's on the ceiling. And you, like, push it through this gravity portal, the ball goes up, and now you're playing on the ceiling. So I'm holding my stick on the ground, hitting the ball, like, on the ceiling. Sometimes it's on the wall. and. Dude, it's so cool. And apparently all, like, right. all the other levels have weird shit like this. Like there's a new one coming out with lasers and stuff at the end of the month. Very excited. Um, and the hard mode does unlock clubs. That is what the clues unlock for us, Tom, is different. Right. Clubs. So every level. We got the wooden club from yeah, the. Yeah. 
So yeah, yeah. So Very cool. uh, I went, I did a hard mode last night and I got all the clues on one and I got a sword. So my club is a Ooh, sword now. Very it's cool. Really fucking cool. So. That is cool. So. That's cool. That is cool. Um, there's a little bit of news. So let's do that. A uh, little taste of the juice. Oh, uh, sorry. I would thought Microsoft you buying Activision one. Blizzard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, well, <laughs> it's not done, but it's done. <laughs> it's not done, but it's done. Exactly. Um, basically, what uh, the the judge ruled in favor of Microsoft, saying that the FTC's no attempt one's to Microsoft hold... about this over there anymore, Tommy. No, 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 micro, macro hard, <laughs> macro, <laughs> macro hard. Uh, I saw pictures. I don't know if they are pictures from after the court trial, but I saw pictures being used for the like thumb of articles of Phil Spencer. No, and their, I was that like, that was their Microsoft. That wasn't a thumb. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I was like, I have to assume these half these photos were taken right after the trial because I've never seen this man look happier than right oh, now. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, basically, what happened was is the FTC tried to put out an injunction to slow the sale down, and the the judge ruled in favor of Microsoft. The FTC has already said that it's going to appeal, but the problem is yeah. is now, like, you 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 had one shot at this, and they, I'll say this. Well, they got a lot of concessions that, like, I mean, were, like, their yes. primary points. Like, getting them to be like, hey, we will put Call of Duty, uh, like, by the way, on Switch, which Call of Duty wasn't coming to Switch. So, oh. like, it's now going to be in more places than it would have been. Yeah. And, and I mean, a, a lot of that was obviously happening in the works before specifically this trial. But, you know, now they're going back to the CMA, who, like, fully blocked it in the UK, and they're already drafting up like a, a revised version and then there's the other thing of like activision is like well we want more money now like this this thing is not done it's still going to take time but this was kind of the 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 deciding i think yeah. factor of like is this going to happen or not even if they'd ruled in favor of the ftc it still could have happened but yeah basically it's like the the momentum is is very much a microsoft's court and i think that you know following following it the the FTC really bungled <laughs> this whole trial. Like they did not present a compelling case. I actually think Microsoft did a very very good job. I don't necessarily agree with all of their points, but they did a very good job of detailing why this isn't a problem. Um, there's obviously a lot to get into, but yes, essentially it's going to happen. It's still going to take time, but yeah. Uh, lots, lots, lots of macro hard happening over at Microsoft. I just want Diablo on Game Pass <laughs> by the end of the year. That would be my hope. Probably won't happen. It probably won't be until next year. No, it'll, it'll probably be, take yeah. another twelve months for this to actually like, I finalize. Agree. Yep. Probably, but, yeah. So uh, that was the well, big, big well, news. Well, oh, okay. Well, you sure about that? You sure, sure about that? that? You sure about that? <laughs> what you got? It's tail time. Gex it's is tail back, time. baby. Oh god, Gex no. is back. Right. That's right. Let me run games today. They showed off a bunch of cool stuff. There are a lot of great games that are coming. The number one most important. Oh, actually, that's hard to say because there's that Jurassic Park collection, which I'm equally excited for. But Gex, Gex is back with Gex, Gex end of the Gecko, and Gex three. I'm so excited to be able to play these fucking games again. I so they love... what's going on? <laughs> Limited run games. They they like publish old games. Right. And stuff. Yes. Um. Mm -hmm. They they had a stream today with a with a bunch of video game collections. One of them being released on Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, Steam is a Gex collection. Gex is back. There hasn't been a new Gex game since N sixty four. But are these new games? No, they're the original. No. Games. Okay, they're so they get, okay. Down, they got back up again. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're republishing the Gex games. I'm there very excited. I'm well, very it, excited. it it plays There's into a Titanic the... level, so it plays oh, okay. into today. 
You know, it's very because of the, the submarine. Yeah. Okay. Hey, look, man. I didn't know where that was. My going. heart will go on. Was like, oh uh, yeah, like uh, the top charts of Spotify, and apparently Titanic's getting played a fuck ton on Netflix. So, like, let's not pretend like that submarine didn't bring Titanic back into the, you know, the conversation. <laughs> I'm so excited for Gex. I'm, I'm assuming neither of you have played. No. no. Grandmaster Gecko, Gex himself. No. No. You really missed out. I I remember it existing, but I never played it. Ooh. An official Star Wars level? No, it's, Gex is like a parody game. Uh -huh. So, like, you go to, like, a Looney Tunes world that looks like, you know, the Wild West Looney Tunes stuff, and he's making, like, joke references. It's, like, it's all going like to be Deadpool? so fucking dated, kind of like old Tiny Tunes and Animaniacs stuff, where, like, all the jokes are from, like, the late 90s, early 2000s. All of Gex, all of the commentary is going to be the same, which, by the way, there's going to be some stuff in there that it's, like... Ooh, I don't know about this. I don't know about this accent you're doing here. <laughs> All right, they're gonna be they're gonna be a couple of parts in that game where you're, where you're gonna be like, this seems very racist to all Asian people. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> if they keep this in there, all right. but they're not do like they're republishing oh, the original game, so I wouldn't. Um, but you know, it's like that. That was like the the thing at the time was like we're gonna parody everything, and it's fun. It's fine because it's funny, but like you know. Some of those things won't won't age right. Well, well but... in the Looney Tunes now, like if you go watch them on yes. HBO or whatever, they have the thing. It's like, hey, yes, this was <laughs> this is not okay, and that's so. I wonder if they'll have that in there, and like, I doubt it. You know, <laughs> I saw someone make a post like that. It was literally the like the Warner Brothers like warning sign. They were like, they're gonna need to add this before the game starts. <laughs> that's so funny. That's but yeah, so like funny. the character, like he's obsessed with TV and pop culture, and like, like there's a whole the whole enter the gecko gotcha. thing. He's dressed up as a spy, and in the trailer for it, it sounds like James Bond, and it's because they do a whole James Bond thing with him, where he's like a secret agent, and it's supposed to be parodying like the Pierce Brosnan James Bond movies and stuff. It is a very weird, silly action platformer game, at a time that like when I was 13 was fucking awesome. I'm sure it has aged so poorly, but I'm very excited to play this game. Again. That's around I'm the same time play... as like Conquer's Bed for a day. Yes. And stuff like that. Yes. It was it was it was Conquer's Bed for a day, but for teens. So like it wasn't mature rated because they weren't cursing in it, you know? Wait, Conquer's so wasn't for teens? What was Conquer's for then? <laughs> rated M. Rated M. Rated for mature. <laughs> Conquer's, Conquer's Bad Fur Day is for adults only, yes. Actually, that's not true. That I for, I forget sometimes that there are games that are AO, but um, they don't usually do well. Like I think Leisure Suit. Larry I saw. I actually saw like ones. a Leisure Suit Larry sale or something like that happening, and I was like, <laughs> I've never played these, but they've been referenced a whole lot. You know, you know who we know who has played the Leisure Suit Larry games. <laughs> Is it the same person who struggled with the rules of? <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who that was, but I could probably sure. guess. Yes, um, you can. No, it's not. It was Therese had Leisure Suit Larry. No oh, okay. way. She said her mom thought it was hilarious, so her mom had it, so she played. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Which that I didn't is even not believe her, answer. but like she brought it up on her own. And I was like, I mean, there's no way you're making this up because how would you fucking know what this game is? Did she just bring – what was the context of the situation? I was just talking she... about, like, old video games and, oh, like, okay. she had the run pad on the NES and she talked about, like, what old games she was like. She was like, oh, that Leisure Suit Larry game. I was, <laughs> you're like, 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 I was like, shut the fuck up. You never played Leisure Suit. She was like, yes, I did. I was like, no, you did not. There's no way. <laughs> that's I was like, that's a game everyone funny, jokes about. Bro. No one plays it. She yeah. Like, no, my mom thought it was hilarious. I was like – I, I remember like side eyeing her about it for a little while because I was like, I don't know if this is true, but how would she have come up with that on the spot if it yeah, wasn't? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I believe it. I believe it. Damn. Meanwhile, she's okay. at the ESPYs tonight, and here we are talking about video games. So maybe she made the yeah. right choices. Well, the ESPYs, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. It's, it's like the sp it's sports awards. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. To be as generic as possible, it's the sports awards. Yeah. There you go. That no um, um there's also a jurassic park <laughs> collection coming out which i'm very i mean Ooh. these are just games that like i grew up playing and this is great because these are all games that like tom you missed out on a lot of these because they're all from like the 8 and 16 bit era so there are a lot of video games that are coming out that you'll be able to play for the first time 
like the Gex games and the Jurassic right, Park games. Right. Yes. Um, I will certainly get around to it. So there we go. All right. I'm glad. I'm happy for you. I'll so put it out. Any other news or move on to the next? Uh, the uh, EA has announced that they're making a Black oh. Panther standalone game. Uh, this has been rumored for a long time. This is not the Amy Hennig World War II Captain America Black Panther co-op game or whatever that thing is. We don't really know what that is. This is separate. Uh, this is going to be an open world action adventure game. Um, and it's from a new studio called Cliffhanger. Um, and they're, they're hiring right now. And yeah, so that's cool. We'll see that in five years. Um, and yeah, it's, it's their second kind of big Marvel project. Uh, Motive, who did the Dead Space remake, is also working on an Iron Man game. So we'll see what we shall see with these. Oh, yeah. Um, and this is adjacent to gaming news. Mm. But actor of Cal Kestis from the Jedi games, Jedi Fallen Order and Survivor, was just cast for the new Tron movie. Oh, okay. Fun. Yeah. Which means... Is Jared Leto still in it? Yeah. I, Tom, let's not even... <laughs> but here's the thing about this. Here's the thing about this. If yeah. this does well, I mean, this is a Disney product. We're definitely going to be getting a live-action Cal at some point. Like, in... Something. Oh, I think that's inevitable. Yeah, just especially whether with tr- this. With whether Disney Tron does well or not. To put this actor in a property, like into a main film, they're, I'm assuming, going to feel confident to put him into a Star Wars live action sure. at some point. Even if he's just like at a bar when Mando shows up or something. <laughs> Gives him some advice and walks away. Like, you know, like, it, even know. if it's that limited. But I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Don't go in the bathroom. I blew it up in there. Just watch yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> very calcastus let's drop him bombs and then he walks away but it actually explodes there you go it's real bombs thermal detonators um great anything else or move on to the mail move on to the mail mail email at unrankedpodcast.com that's emails at unrankedpodcast.com 805-738-6692 is the phone number i love when you call in just like this Care Bears in the Discord. Good. Uh, I was just listening to the Power episode, and I was thinking, like, oh, I never called in because uh, I was a Christian, and I convinced my wife to get the bed jet, and we've had it for probably <laughs> a couple months now, and it has been amazing. So, <laughs> any listeners out there who maybe think, like, I don't know, Christian is going a little insane over there with how, how great it is no it's awesome it's it's super legit um if you if you're not sure you should just watch the ad on their website it's it's amazing um but that's really it i just wanted to throw out there that i it was all it's awesome and thank you christian for turning me on to that um and everyone else suck it get to hold it this time christian because you recommended a good product but uh, everyone else <laughs> <it> and, uh, <laughs> um, well, now I'm pissed that we didn't get a sponsorship. That we're actually selling these things. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, oh god damn it! Um, we, we'll get five yeah. percent of each sale. I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, great. That's good. We got. We ordered. I have. It's. It's here. It just needs to be unboxed. But we got to wait until Brooks sister takes our old one. King mattress. Oh wow, it's here. that's a big upgrade. It's a big upgrade. Classic big King? upgrade. Yeah, just the regular King because it was Nectar was having a July Fourth sale and it was good, affordable, yeah, as affordable you, as mattress. Still has a July Fourth sale. All right. I mean, maybe maybe pair. Yeah, right. Go to bedjet.com forward slash unranked and get your twenty percent off. Not load. <laughs> yeah. Uh, God damn it. Um, yeah, we got to We get. You know, we we should hit up some of these weird Instagram people that you buy products from and be like, "Hey, Chris is guaranteed to buy your product and talk about it on the podcast." Let's. I know, but some. the C- the CPMs on these things are bad now. No, it's bad. It's bad. It's, yeah. They're all bad now, and, yeah. and they also require far too higher high of a listenership. 
for now like a low yeah. dollar amount. Yep. It's uh it's garbage now. Yep. So which is why we only get fun. With these, with these companies that no one's heard of. And be right. like for every product we sell with our code, we get a percentage. That way we get nothing if you sell none of them. So what's the difference? And you'll get more and we get some. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, they can ask us to buy some of the product, but then sell it. Right. And then... and so, yes. And well, then we get I mean, people, I have six yes. in my house right now, but when yeah, I find six, six other bucks, people to sell them to, I'm gonna make some profit. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm gonna sell each of them sex. Yeah. It's yeah. not a it's well. a pyramid scheme, but I'm at the top. So yeah. I see. I see. Yeah. I see. Yeah. No, it's a square because we're all we're all next to each other and there's people below us. <laughs> um cool. Good to Tuna's, know about the bad chat. Tuna's considering it because he texted me recently, unprompted, like, so what's that website on the bed chat? How does it work? And I was like, Oh, someone's thinking about it. Someone had a hot night's sleep. Yeah. Someone woke Tween? up from a hot night's sleep and was like, What's this fucking thing Christian well, Chris, will shut up about? <laughs> here's the thing. Would he be like putting his uh, his circuit breaker under too much fucking uh, stress with that, no, along no. with the CPAP machine? No, no. How many machines can he have running in a bed at one time before it becomes it's, a hazard? It, it doesn't. It doesn't draw because I'll tell you what. It definitely not because our house because because of the way they built the townhouses and how many they built here because they took what was like. An apartment a building dirt. and a house, and oh. they built the equivalent of twenty houses that because it's four rows of five townhouses. The way that it got hooked up to the electrical line, our overall like um, I don't know what the correct term is, whether it's like the wattage or whatever, but it's actually slightly lower than average. So like mm. our fuses can act, have slightly less stress than you might want them to, um, which hasn't been an issue because. Our AC system is a mini split. It's not like central air or anything. So you can just turn it on per room, which is nice. So like we're not burning tons of energy all the time. But like it, the bed jet doesn't even make my lights flicker or anything. Like okay. the bidet makes my lights flicker when it was oh. on the same circuit <laughs> as like this, That's like my office. So the bidet. So every time you wash your ass, it's a light show. Well, yeah. you know, so, so there's two outlets <laughs> in my bathroom and one of them is on the same circuit as the stuff in my office. And the other one, it's just the bathroom outlet. It has like a GFI. If I didn't, if I don't use the GFI one, if I use the other one, it makes the lights in my room flash when you turn it on. So was the, sec- <laughs> the second I did that, the first time I was like, not doing that ever again. <laughs> <laughs> but it has to know. have a stupid extension cord because of that. But yeah, no, st- the bed jet, the bed jet will be fine. I'm sticking with my ghetto bed jet for now, which is just my air conditioner right I next mean, to that's the bed great. with the blanket a- slightly peeled. That's a great move. I did that for a long time. And then someone was like, there must be a better way. <laughs> and it now there like is such a Shark With... Tank product that's never been on Shark Tank. But it really, it really is great. I gotta be honest. Um, we got another voicemail. Listen, you can write in. But call in. Because it's great. I love I love hearing the voicemail. Hey guys, it's uh Mr. No Fears here on uh, Discord. Um You know, I was originally going to call in because I had a question of how have you guys not, like, kind of made, like, a a somewhat career out of this podcast yet? Because it's been, like, God, (laughs) thinking back on that, I don't know how many years, but you guys know how long. But how have you guys not made, like, a career out of this podcast? But then I was listening to the end of the latest podcast and the game for it. I'm like... You know what? That's probably why I'm they haven't that made episode. a career out of it. It's hilarious, but I don't know. I love you guys, and I love this podcast. I've listened to it for God knows how many years, however long y'all been going. Podcast, keep sucking it. Love you. Throw it back around at the end there. What game? Um. So this was this this must have been right before we did the Power Hour. So it was yeah. the episode before that, the one that Tom missed, where we it was with Brendan on, and it was um yeah. the most popular remember. porn search terms. Oh, there, yeah, that's right. Did that yeah, I mean, stop us it, from getting a sponsor. That would just mean well, we get yeah. a different kind of sponsor. Yeah, yeah, it means you can't have the sponsorship ad read within like fifteen minutes of that. <laughs> yeah, the, the, well, it depends if it, if the sponsorship is like Pornhub or something. It works perfectly. There you go. That's right. 
We could just get a porn up sponsor show and we'd be right as rain. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's funny. We just talked about like is, how like the ad revenue like for the things now is terrible. I mean, look, it, it, inside inside baseball, it's something that we we've, we've talked about in various forms, and obviously, like we do. Uh, page well, we did Patreon now. It's now it's Discord subs, and we had merch for a while. The problem is make some it, new merch. The pro, but the problem is it's just a lot of work. Yeah, but to, I, could, to, I could knock out some shirts. Yeah, but it's but here's the thing: there's a difference between knocking out shirts that a cup, you know, the diehards that that are listening in are gonna buy, which is great. We'd love to for you to have the shirts, and some of you actually do have some merch out there because yeah. we did that for a while. Some <laughs> but to build on it, to turn it into oh, yeah, a business, yeah. like all of these, like to actually make a career out of this. And I think that the other thing is, is like, you know, obviously me and Chris are very much in that world and Dan obviously uh, as well to an extent, but you know, then there's Tuna who is not in this world at all. Um, and it's just, it's just a lot of work. And, yeah. and the other thing is, is that I think that, while I still think we could make a thing that you guys would enjoy and it be our career and whatnot, and we have sponsorships and all this, we literally get to do whatever we want without right. any right. issue or beholden to anything or worried about we be the next sponsorship. Anymore. We would not be able to do power that hours. Never, That'd be that out would of the be question. The, end of the power hour for sure. Yep. yep. Uh, or we probably wouldn't be able to say suck by it. A beer. Like, no, because uh, beer the, wants you to drink. They don't do it. Yeah, don't biz, to... yeah. We my are friend, responsible. We're not driving. My my friend who does the the you know They're I brought really up some... specific about it. Yeah, yeah I brought. Them, I thought I thought to my fuck friend I was like, companies. oh how uh, why don't you get a sponsor for the the uh, survivor drinking game that he does? Like it's so big now. Like it's been written up in articles. Like all the stuff. He's like, no one wants to touch this with a ten foot pole. Yeah, I'm like oh, then also he, if he profits <laughs> off of it, then he's in trouble with Survivor. <laughs> well, that, well the that's way. that's the other element but it the drinking element is the is the yeah. thing yeah, yeah beer, beer sponsorships would never uh yeah. sponsor that so there's just a bunch of elements that you know and it, it like if one one of us has to miss a week if we have to cut it sh you know some weeks it's like we have to cut it short like we can't we don't have time for a game like this this is also why yeah. the, the, the discord is a better thing that makes sense for us it's like when we did the patreon it was nice when we first started it because we, especially Tom and I had a lot more time. So we could dedicate time to like editing right. things when we were like trying to do mini episodes or like bonuses and things like that. And then like Dan's traveling a lot. Alex is, you know, having a kid. And there's all these things. It's like, well, we don't have time for that. But if we want to do bonus stuff for fun, we can. Yeah. But being beholden to it suddenly makes it like yeah. a bunch of work that we're yeah. unable to do. And then when we can't fulfill that work, it's just like, that just yeah. sucks. And then yeah, it's it not sucks. fun. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, the podcast can be, you know, it, we can do a quick one. We could do a long one. Like, right. there's just this podcast. The, the reason this podcast is so fun is it is so loose and we can literally do whatever. Mm -hmm. And not to say that we would l lose that entirely, but it would change. It would have to change. Yes. And I don't think you guys want that. And honestly, you know, I think I sh it was something I put. I'm sure that you, uh, you guys also might at some point have been like, it's frustrating that this podcast has some success and like the the ability to build off of that into a way that dry. You know, we can just do this or whatever. It's frustrating, like how hard it is. But when I let go, That's what she said, exactly. There you go. There's an example. <laughs> when I let go of the notion of this podcast, like being a potential thing where I, I make this my career, I focus on this and I just let it be the podcast. We hang out every week. We put it out every week. We jump into the discord, you know, every yeah. now and then I had way, way more fun. Yeah. Not course. that I wasn't having fun, but like letting go of that notion, like makes it more fun to make this. Yeah, absolutely. So there you go. There's your answer. I mean, for me, by the way, like I started this podcast along with a bunch of others as a right. like I had been working freelance in L.A. for five years doing a lot of other things. And then I finally got like some like associate producing gigs. And I was like, oh, this is the thing I'm best at. Like I'm like creative producing, producing is the thing I am best at. Like I figured that out very quickly. But people don't just give you producer jobs. 
You have right. to have something that you have produced. And the easiest thing that I was able to do, because I wanted to try and do YouTube videos and stuff, but it's incredibly hard to rely on people. It's really hard to rely on people even just to show up for podcasts. So that's why I was like, well, if I can fucking start like a dozen different podcasts and I get other friends who have theirs and make it part of it and run it all together. And that worked. That's how I got like the E3 job. That's how I got yeah. a bunch of other gigs. That's how I got consulting jobs. And that's like primarily what I do now is like I, I do like random consulting on things. Um, I've done development consulting, creative producing, uh, and it was never meant to be a like in podcast. It was just so I could, you know, it was like a proof yeah. of concept. That being yeah. said, I enjoy doing the podcast so much, but I got to tell you, after I worked at G4 and I saw what it was like for influencers, and this is not a like, please pity influencers. Yeah. Because don't, but they're the goats of being pitied. <laughs> you are just you are just so beholden to all of these people that like if you want to make this a career you need to be big you're either big or you're or you're not like that's it yeah like there isn't there there really are very few people who can make like a modest living doing this you're either making money or you're not really making money yeah like, there was actually something coming out about like middle class influences who like make money but it they they're influencing like landscape or whatever is Jeff. They still need their day job, but it's yes. at risk. It's risk that like they're losing jobs and all this stuff. Yes. And like, that's the middle ground that is like a nightmare. And yep. even when you become big though, it is that thing of like your life is well, you're no, you're not even you anymore because if yeah. you're you, you're going to do something that's going to set either your audience or your sponsors. And yeah. so you're basically beholden to a bunch of other people oh. and like your whole life is being broadcasted all of the time in such a way that like you're ultimately, ultimately, if you're making a career as an influencer, you're, you're really not a, the idea of being a content creator. You're a salesman. That's what you are yeah. is you're a salesman. And I don't want to be a salesman no, for no, my no. job. What I would like to uh, do. Unless, is unless it's the bad jet. Well, hey, listen. <laughs> yeah, my, listen. My real job crosses over towards sales way too fucking much, and it bothers the shit out of me. I don't like that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that like, sucks. Right, like, I work in ad integrations. Like, ultimately, it's, like, what my day job is. But I, I still do, like, random freelance work. But, um, yeah, like, I just – this show being, like, successful, we're all making a bunch of money off it, means that, like, I'm a salesman. Like, <laughs> I got to tell you, yeah. that's not fun. Yeah, especially like unless it's a bed jet buy the bed jet guys go but, buy the bed jet but by the way like the sponsorships when they go away you can't just <laughs> get another one yeah like it's hard to get them yeah. and like like so one of the things we were doing all the time was like oh we have to try and get sponsors on like our game show and stuff right so like a sponsor would show up like subway and it was like okay well subway wants to do a sponsorship and we're like great cool so we're gonna run ads like no they want it like integrated into the show okay well how do they and wow. so like all of these companies want you to integrate their stuff into your show in a dynamic or original way that they don't these people don't know what your show is they don't actually know what it is so all of their suggestions don't make any sense so then they're like <laughs> okay send us send us creative so i'll i would come up with like five different fake ad commercial options for them or like segments and a way to integrate their product and they'd be like yeah this is cool but you're not allowed to do anything that would like damage the sandwich oh, dude, and it's just like yeah. oh my god like this yeah. is i'm spending so much of my time not doing the like good part of the job and yeah. doing this like fucking nonsense yeah. Because yeah. like the people at Subway aren't going to come with anything good. The, but they, that, they definitely that is they a, know what they're doing. That is that is a huge issue that I that I have run into when I've worked on branded content is because companies have no idea like what goes on in video production. Like even just the simple thing of like, hey, you are asking for this to drop at this time by this date. And because you have to rely on the company to like, you know, some places are loose, like they'll just have you do an ad read or whatever. But if they want to do integrations or you're building something bespoke, you have to have them, they have to be creatively involved in the process yeah. and like make sure that what you put out, like even if it's like, 
we've done things where I've had to like edit words out just for like the timing of things to get it under because they're like, it has to be under six minutes and 30 seconds or whatever. And I have to edit words out of the script that don't really change anything, but we still have to run that by them because it is different than what we've said we're going to do. So like that element of it is like, they don't take into consideration at all how long these changes take and granted, that wouldn't necessarily affect what we would do with like basic ad reads, but that is like another side. It's like working with these fucking companies that don't understand creative is just a fucking nightmare. But I was going to say on the flip real quick before we move on to the next thing. It has, at least, you know, with you and I, it has been our career because, it, like you said, it is a thing that we can point to. I've Every job that I've got, right. I've pointed to this as an example of like, I am dedicated to making things and there is a proven track record of some level of success and i can bring that to this job and it sharpens your skills even though that this is like the stupidest fucking thing ever it's still like producerially sharpens your skills and keeps you keeps you when maybe you're not working you're still creatively doing stuff and so it has kind of in a way been my career because i would probably not be where i am without it so i mean you were doing all of those videos for our youtube channel which i was looking at the interim i'm like the day tom gets a job a new new, like gaming thing this is gonna and the second you got the game so i'm like that's done but i also understood why you were doing it because that was the whole reason why i started all the podcasts in the first place yep people were like well if you're trying to do like tv or streaming video like why are you doing podcasts and i'm like well because at some point these are going to be video podcasts but also because I tried to do YouTube and I don't want to be just like, or at least in the past, I wasn't comfortable enough with hearing my own voice to also be able to watch myself on screen. And I was Mm -hmm. like, I don't want to be a YouTuber either. Right. Like I just didn't. Whereas now it's like, Oh, I'll stream. And I don't even think twice about it. But like back then when we started doing the show, every time I edit the podcast, I wanted to fucking like stab my ears because i hated listening to my own <laughs> voice and i thought everything i said was fucking stupid so it's like you know like after a while mm-hmm. you either just get over it or you're like okay maybe everyone's just stupid so i guess it doesn't matter it's but um <laughs> sounds like it's that one yeah. it's that one yeah, it's I mean, a big it's, it's column a, a, a column b yeah. a little bit column more a, column b, a little bit of column a. yeah no i don't think any i don't know maybe tom does uh i feel like the rest of us don't really love our own voice <laughs> I like my own voice, yeah. I definitely... I, I would like mine better <laughs> if I was good at turning off this... I do this, like, I use my head voice all the time. Game show voice? Because of... Because of... <laughs> um, well, no, if, if I came down here to my regular voice, but I use my head voice because of Apple. Working in retail, I just got trained so long to use my retail voice, which I'm basically, like, it's my nasal voice, it's higher pitched, and it's more friendly and welcoming, but every time I still hear it, I'm like, oh, I wish I could do my relaxed voice which by the way like when i'm on like even when i come on like your streams dan or like tom's or if i'm playing something else for whatever reason i'm able to do that like if i go on a podcast as a guest i'm able to like relax and be like whatever but the second i'm hosting my own like unranked or whether it was yeah. doing watch Rose, i'm like oh hey everybody how's it going like you can't, can't be like off. you can't be like we're all excited to be here. Let's act like we want to just yeah, like kill true. ourselves. It's like you true. can't sound like that the whole time. And I trained myself like that's my presentation voice. I guess that's so fucking stupid. All yeah, right. Yeah. When I, I used, yeah, I mean, when I used to do like radio and stuff in like college, like I had to do that, and I fucking hated every second I sounded like that. Yes. And I was like trying to imitate what I had heard, so I was like, okay, here we are. So I try not to now. We should all just pick new voices next week. Sweet. Everyone, 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 just come in with a slightly different voice. Don't go too crazy. Don't pick like a weird accent, Dan. Yeah, Chris, Chris is going to go Gex, Gex Asian. Do slightly, don't do that. Don't do that. Do a slightly <laughs> different voice. We're not going to tell anyone, and we're, we're going to do it. And Alex, just will tune be like, what the fuck? No one acknowledge it. No one it. Alex won't listen to this. He won't know. It'll be crazy. no. There's no way. All right. Oh. We're at the end of the show. We, See, we, there, there was, you go. There were some questions, but we should, we should, you know, we have post show. It feels like a nice spot to call it. Um, 805-738-8692 is my favorite when you guys call in, but you can drop us a line or email or on the show notes. Go to Discord, questions for the pod. Dan and Tom are both streaming. Their stuff's on the, on the uh, show notes. I, I'm doing some, I might honestly just like whenever I'm playing VR streams, you can check that out as well. But until next time, thank you as always for listening. 
stay in rank. So and suck it. Unless you're a sponsor and then don't. We won't say it anymore. Man, I can't believe you sold a bed jet. 